Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are one of the new people, my name is Carla and I make videos about how I show up for myself in hopes of inspiring you to show up for yourself. If you like content around weight loss, weight maintenance, mental health, a bit of fashion and beauty and weekly or bi-weekly vlogs, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you can also follow me over on my Instagram, again, half of Carla. By showing up for myself, I managed to lose 180 pounds. And there are many, many things that we expect when we lose 180 pounds. And then there are some really unexpected things. So obviously being smaller, fitting into a smaller dress size, being maybe more physically fit and physically active, like the seatbelt extender, these are expected outcomes. These are non-scale victories that we're looking to get. But there are some things that have happened to me since I lost weight that I had no idea were going to be a thing. And I also, some of them have, you know, are a bit kind of random and don't really make that much difference. But then some of them are a bit strange and kind of a bit more impactful. So today I'm going to be chatting to you about five of the most unexpected things that have happened to me since losing weight. The first thing are the physical changes that I did not expect. There are three particular areas where in my body that I had no idea I was going to lose weight from. You imagine like, you know, you're going to lose weight, especially for women, we're going to lose weight from our boobs and maybe from men as well our waist, our hips, all of these kind of things, our face, these are really normal expected outcomes. The three that I did not expect were to lose weight from my nose. Who loses weight from their nose? I lost weight from my nose and I actually know that a couple of people, my nose got smaller. So I'll insert a picture here, what my nose look, used to look like. So you can see it before and after. How strange is that? It's not something I would have ever imagined. And I don't think I ever would have thought of fat increasing your nose because it's just cartilage, isn't it? Is that what it is? But it's so weird that I did actually lose some weight. Now it didn't go dramatically small or anything like that, but it's a bit strange. Like I definitely, it's noticeable. The second area was my feet. And I know this one is slightly more common, but I never really imagined that I was going to lose that much weight from my feet because I went down an entire shoe size. I have always thought I was a UK size six, which is a US nine. No, a US 8. But I always felt that shoes were a little bit uncomfortable on me. And because of my bigger legs, my bigger calves, my bigger feet, I kind of sometimes even went for a seven and would end up slipping around them. Turns out I'm actually UK size five, five and a half. And I've even fit into a UK size four now. Something I never really expected that was gonna happen. Like my feet getting smaller. But it actually, it's really nice because if I want to wear heels or if I want to wear something that's a bit strappier, I don't have that like bulging effect like poor Kim Kardashian when she was pregnant and wearing those stupid shoes. Why would you do that to yourself? And the last area that I lost weight from, uh, the unexpected one, was my ears. My earlobes got skinnier. And actually, um, any of my piercer who has done like all my piercings on both sides, she was saying to me that I have the most delicate ears that my ears are so so tiny and I used to never wear hoop uh, studs because I always felt that they ended up looking like they were being suffocated by my ears by my ear lobe fat not anymore how bizarre moving on to a slightly more impactful unexpected outcome I didn't necessarily expect that everybody was going to be happy for me but I didn't also wasn't prepared for the idea that people would be actively unhappy for you when you lose weight. And that's something that my sister had kind of prepared me for a little bit, but I didn't really expect to see that impact. When we live our lives in a certain way for such a long period of time as I had, um, I was 32 when I started my mental health journey and 33 when I started my weight loss journey. And I definitely fit into a certain category and criteria and a box for the people that I interacted with on a daily basis from my family home to my relationships with my friends to my career to extended family and to people I would interact with. I had a, a, a prototype of who I, I had a basically like an avatar of who I was with those people. We change the way we interact depending on how comfortable we are with people. And I had never really allowed people in that much because I had such a barrier up every time I went well, for my whole life because I didn't want to let people in. I had so much shame. People interact with us when we're in this box and you know, this kind of category that we 
adhere to in our social settings and our social engagements and our, you know, the people that we surround ourselves with. And then when we start to change, it can make other people feel uncomfortable. And that discomfort is also part of kind of like, it's almost as if when you start to change and maybe change the behavior that you shared with somebody else, it shows and shines a mirror up to them and they start to look at themselves. And maybe it's something that they don't want to see. Maybe, you know, if you start to lose weight and you have always been the friend who's also overweight and you start to lose weight, somebody can be very unhappy for you. And it might take them a while in order to decide that they want to lose weight or it might, they might never want to and that's their decision. But that change and that dynamic can make that person unhappy for you. And that was the case with myself because I watched my sister who had always been overweight, just like me, lose weight. And I felt like she had left me behind. And I think that when we interact with people who are no longer happy for us, the only thing that we can do is treat them with compassion and treat them with kindness. We do not have to accept any negativity into our lives. We don't have to be like, you know, we don't have to take on board. We, we can show up for ourselves, stand true to ourselves and continue on and say, you know, I hope you're doing okay. If they give you backhand compliments or something, just say thank you and move on, but treat them and keep them with a compassionate feeling in you because maybe they have not changed. And if you are in that position, and if you've had been in that position before, you know that feeling, you know the panic that can happen when somebody changes and it no longer fits in your box. And maybe those people will no longer be your friends. Maybe those people will not be the people that you interact with anymore. And that's okay. I have lost friends from losing weight. And it's not because I've lost weight. It's because of the change in myself and the change in who I am and that I don't take crap. I am not a pushover. I'm also a much kinder and much calmer person. And I have changed my whole outlook and maybe, and I'm actually much more ambitious as well. And maybe that doesn't fit in with somebody and it makes them feel uncomfortable. And that's okay. We can part ways amicably. We do not have to get into a big drama and fight. And I think that that's something that I, I've never been a confrontational person and we don't need to be confrontational unless somebody you know, comes at you. People may not be happy for you, but there are people who may be happy for you and that those relationships can change with those people and that as they grow, as you grow, they can grow. Jared from Body Slims, if you've ever been part of the program, will always say people change from inspiration or desperation. And sometimes I have inspired people around me in order to help them to change something about their lives or to lose weight or to seek therapy. And being compassionate and kind and patient with those people while they're going through that that trigger because we like things to be the same. We are comfortable with our discomfort. We like things to stay the same. And that means that we like the people around us to stay the same. And when they start to change, it can make us feel very triggered. It's like our, our ancient reptilian brain going, danger, something is different. And it's okay. We can be compassionate to those people. But remember, you do not have to change anything about you just because of somebody else. Do not dim your light to make somebody else feel better. I really want you to hear that. It's important that you put yourself first and in doing so, your light will ripple out to everybody else. Number three is back to a little bit more of kind of the unexpected, slightly fun things that, well, I actually would not say this is fun, but it's kind of annoying actually, is that I am cold all the time all the time. I had no idea that this was a thing. I did not understand that I would be cold when I lost weight. But of course it makes perfect sense. When you take a 13 stone lagging jacket off your hot press or your water, hot water tank, is that what it's called? You know, we have those jackets around them and if you take that jacket off, then that water is gonna cool down easier and that's gonna be the same with you. Like if you take off 13 stone of a coat, and then you don't have that and you go out into the winter, all of a sudden you're really freaking cold. And I am cold all the time, guys. 
layers and thermals are my perfect thing now. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, it's about your iron, it's about this. My bloods are perfect, guys. I have them checked all the time. Every single year I have a blood uh, review done with my GP. My bloods are perfect. The only thing I'm ever deficient in is a little bit of vitamin D because I live in Ireland. So, but I take the supplements for that. It's nothing to do with that. It is literally to do with the fact that I do not have as much meat on my bones to keep more fat to insulate me. Number four of my unexpected outcomes is that weight loss was going to be the least significant part of weight loss. And I thought my whole life, I have always been trying to lose weight. I'll leave my video linked up here if you guys want to watch my whole video about my weight loss journey. But I expected and tried to lose weight every single Monday morning, tried all those big programs, all like the Weight Watcher Slimming World, Uni Slim, uh, Atkins Keto and all the other kind of like little fad diets that were going on in between the 5-2 and all these kind of things. I've tried them all beforehand and nothing ever stuck and that's because of the mental health part etc. But I expected that when I lost weight, when I became physically smaller, that all the other issues that I experienced in my life would disappear. I blamed every single area of my life and anything that was going wrong on my weight. The fact that I was overweight, when in fact, actually that wasn't the issue. The issue was my shame, it was my negative self-talk, it was so many more of these things. And so for me, being physically smaller is actually just a byproduct of changing my mental health and the way I am. And I know for me that came first, and it resulted then, you know, I, my mental health changed, my showing up for myself, my continued journey into valuing myself as a human changed first. And then as I went on, my weight loss and my ability to lose weight was a direct repercussion of that or a direct benefit or outcome or a result of changing my mental health. But I know that for a lot of people who do that mental health work while they are losing weight, especially if they do body slims. I'm not going to harp on about it, but especially if they do body slims, that they are changing that mental part and that in the end, the value that they feel in themselves is more important and more impactful than the actual weight loss. It is the freedom. It is the lightness because just changing your shape doesn't change anything. But when you change everything that's inside you, that changes everything and that impact is golden. We're gonna finish on a lighthearted note. Guys, I got taller. I got taller. And I have two theories for this. So I went from just under five foot eight to just over five foot eight. Now I'm not saying I grew by like five inches or something like that. It was very small, like kind of minute detail. But it's funny to see that I actually managed to get taller. And I have two theories on how this happened. My hypothesis are that when I was being measured for height wise beforehand because my arse was so big and I will search a picture of said arse like that's where I kept all my weight was in my bum and my hips not all but like there was a lot going on there that I ended up kind of leaning back to get to the wall so instead of being the height I was leaning back and reducing my height or that with the weight the physical weight in my body my spine was more compressed and now that I don't have that weight, I'm easier able to extend my spine and to stand up tall. Weird one. Guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you've liked it. I know it's been a little bit more lighthearted. I just wanted to kind of have something a bit fun with you guys. Let me know any unexpected weight loss outcomes you've had, or if you have thought about any of these, if these were going to be things that you were going to have or worried about having. Let me know them down in the comments. Please make sure you're subscribed and also Make sure you leave me a little emoji of your choice. I will love you and leave you guys and thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to show up for yourselves. Bye guys.